He's the oldest male of seven children. In 1997, Mr. Smoke enrolled at college at Virginia State University. Mr. Smoke went on to receive a bachelor's degree in political science. Mr. Smoke has had the pleasure of being a member of the Trojan Explosion BSU marching band. Mr. Smoke is a member of the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. After entering the workforce, Mr. Smoke returned to Virginia State University where he received his master's degree in education. He has completed his post-master's certificate in education administration and his educational specialist degree from George Washington University. He currently holds the position of ninth grade assistant principal at Potomac High School in Prince George's County, Maryland. For the past three years, Mr. Smoke has made himself available to the Kettering Middle School family to share a model that he lives his life by, the three C's, to stay in constant conflict with conformity. Thank you. Pain stands for persistence after immediate no. I'm going to say it again. Pain stands for persistence after immediate no. So y'all look really nice today. I like the shirt and ties. It's cute. I like the dresses, you know, and the nice shoes. You, know, you got swag, bro. I like that. White, white shoes are nice. However, this means absolutely nothing as you get ready to go to the next level. So I am here to prepare you for the pain that awaits you on the, on, in the ninth grade level. Many of you will be going to either neighboring high schools or high schools that may be afar. And no matter where you go, the one thing I guarantee you that will be waiting for you is pain. Why am I talking about pain? If you plan on being successful in life or being successful in successfully getting out of the ninth grade, then it is very important that you know the proper skills and tools to endure the pain that awaits you. So what exactly am I talking about? Many of you up to this point have been worshiped. You got your whole crew here, mama them there, daddy them there, they done brought everybody. Your whole life up until this point, you've been worshiped. That's my baby, she can do no wrong. That's my son. One day he's gonna be a great whatever. He don't make mistakes. Wrong. As you get ready to go into high school, pain awaits you because many of you will be faced with various painful experiences that you have to be able to endure, push through, and successfully make it. The most challenging grade level in any high school is the ninth grade. Being that I was a ninth grade assistant principal, 10th grade assistant principal, 11th grade assistant principal, and I'm preparing to be a 12th grade, I see more now than ever the importance of the ninth grade. So you must be ready for the pain. What exactly am I talking about? Just this school year alone, and I love where I work, I love Potomac High School. Proud to be an assistant principal at Potomac High School. Proud to work there. Also, for those that don't know, Potomac High School has the second highest graduation rate in the state of Maryland. You can tweet about that. So, just this school year alone, we lost two kids. Gone. We came to work one day, a ninth grader, dead. Murdered at home. I knew that young man in middle school. We just finished doing a home visit to his house two weeks before that event had happened. How do you think we felt? How do you think the scholars of Potomac felt when they came to school that day only to find out their friend is no longer there? He's gone. Midway through the year, we lost another one who was murdered. Why am I talking about this? Because a lot of our young people seem to think that when you leave middle school, it's just a land of milk and honey and there's no pain. That's a lot. To be successful, you're gonna have to go through some pain, some uncomfortable situations. I like to call it vicissitudes. It's the vicissitudes of life, which is the unplanned events that happen. Mom and them driving to Kettering Middle today, all of a sudden, there's an accident right in front of them. They, they didn't plan for that. The unplanned events that happen. Many of you, I'm quite sure, have done very well here, and I applaud you. But I promise you, high school is a whole other animal. Every teacher will not like you. Let's just call it what it is. You won't like every teacher that you have. You probably was the most sociable person here at Kettering Middle. Everyone loved you. 
You're going to get to high school and find out you really are not all that. And everybody really do not like you. They just tolerate you. So when you're dealing with these situations, you have to be able to endure that pain and keep pushing. Why am I talking about this? Didn't we lose a, a, a beautiful young girl in Delaware? Lost her life fighting in the bathroom over some snot-nosed boy that got him a new boy ready. Pain. Because when you get to high school, you think you all that in a bag of chips, and the minute your boo break up with you, or get him or her a new boo, I ain't going like that. I ain't going like that, so I'm gonna go to that school. They was on kick talk about me. They was on Twitter. Then you get your families involved. Mm -hmm. I saw them all weekend talking about it. Pain. But that happens because you forgot my second point. You lost sight of the second point. My second point deals with your purpose. To be successful in high school or to be successful in life, you always got to tap into your purpose. I am the oldest male of seven kids. Three different fathers. My father was murdered. I never met him. Right? So here I am in high school. My older sister got kicked out of school because she kicked the girl out of flight of stairs. So they kicked New York City kicked her out of school. So then I go into the same school she just got kicked out of, and they looking at me the same way. Pain. They say, you ain't, you ain't nothing. You're going to be just like your sister. You're going to come here and fight and get kicked out. And I had to fight through that pain of people telling me who I'm not. Telling me I'm not smart. Telling me I don't look good, and I know I look good. <laughs> telling me that I'm not capable of going to college. My guidance counselor told me, you don't have the attention span for a four-year university. I remember like it was yesterday, Mr. Osborne. We were sitting around with all these, we all was in the same grade level. He said, you don't have the attention span. You're a class clown. You cut school all the time. You cut class all the time. You think all the ladies love you. You're not going to make it in college. You're not smart enough. He told me that to my face. Which is why I went to Virginia State and left with two degrees. Which is why I went to GW and left with a degree. And, with a degree, and I just finished my first year in a doctorate program. Why? I'm doing this for my man, Mr. Osmond. He needs to learn about Mr. Smoke's attention span. Why am I telling you this? Because this happens in high school all the time. Every high school in America is struggling with the ninth grade. Because we are spending more of our time trying to get you to see the light. So let's talk about my second point, your purpose. Every last one of y'all are important. Each of you are special in your own way. So you don't have to fit in a box to be somebody else. Do you. Be you, because you you're, you matter. Today's problems will be fixed by you. Let's talk about justice. I wonder what Tamir Rice feels about justice. Too bad he can't answer that, because he's dead. And he got killed playing with a toy gun where it's legally, where you're legally able to carry. I'm gonna let you marinate on that. Your job, students, graduates, it's the first to be a part of class 2020, right? 16, 17 will be your freshman year, right? 17, 18 will be your sophomore year. 18, 19 will be your junior year. 19, 20, you should be graduating, am I right? So you're part of class 2020. So I'm here to clear your vision about 2020. Every last one of y'all ought to graduate in 2020. But the first thing you gotta do is endure pain. Endure it. Don't cry about it. Don't go get mama and them. They don't like me, mama. I ain't going to class no more. I hear that all the time. My teacher don't like me, so I'm not going. Who does that help? I'm not going to read because you called on me. Really? So you're going to hurt me because you're not going to read a book that I've already read? It's important that you always move in your purpose. Everything I do is with a purpose. I move in my purpose. I work in my purpose. I don't trip on money. It's going to chase after me, so I ain't running after that. I don't trip about people. Whoever's my friend, they're going to be my friend regardless. 
So I ain't breaking my neck to make new ones. I move in my purpose. And when I was in high school, and I was walking in Brooklyn with that shopping cart, with no way to live, I was telling myself, you're important. I was telling myself, you still gonna graduate. It don't matter. You still all of that. Because I operated in my purpose, despite the present pain that I was feeling at that time, and that I know is waiting for you. Which slides me into my third point. Please do not be alarmed by the young people you see in the aisles. These are some of our top-notch scholars at the Potomac High School. You're about to quickly learn a little something about them. See, this year I had to do it a little different. I couldn't come by myself. I got tired of coming here and talking about my kids. So I said, I need to bring just some of my kids with me. If I had it my way, I'd bring all 232 of my juniors here. Because I love every last one of them. My third point is service. I need y'all to hear me clearly. The, I have no problem with advances in technology. That is great. We need it. However, the ability to serve is where greatness begins. And if you want to be great young people, you got to be willing to give. So we're going to break this down to the smallest point. When you get into high school, does anybody know how many service learning hours you need to successfully graduate? How much? 36? Anybody else? Say it again. That's right. You need 24 service learning hours to successfully graduate out of high school. So raise your hands if you have to pay for a mortgage out of the graduate. Raise your hands if you have a full-time job. Put your hand down, boy. There's always one. So, being that none of you have a mortgage to pay for, or a full-time salary position, there's no reason why you can't complete your 24 hours of service learning hours this summer, right? Which slides me into my parents. The success and failure of a school rests on the parents. Y'all really run the show. So what am I saying, parents? These next four years are going to be probably the most important four years of their lives. So when your child gets suspended, they steal your child. When your child's on the honor roll, they steal your child. When your child is getting a scholarship, that's your baby. When your child is up for expulsion, that's your baby. So what, you, what you're not going to do is have them leave here and you looking all keeping the stands. And then when they get to high school and you get that phone call and we need you, you're now telling us, I'm done. I'm hands off. He think he grown. Oh, no, you're not. Because we need you, and they need you. I still need leadership and, and mentorship. So you can't turn your back on them just because they do things that you don't like, because they will. So I'm gonna help you out, parents. When you leave here after today, I'm leaving you with this charge. I need you to go to the high school that your child will be attending, and you need to go into guidance, and you need to ask for that form for the service learning hours. Then when you get the form, go ahead and make sure your child completes those 24 hours over this summer. So when they walk into school as a brand new ninth grader, they have already completed that one graduation requirement. Nothing bothers me more than seeing a lazy, snot-nosed 12th grader that has not completed those 24 hours. You had too much time to get that done. And now we're close to graduation, and you want to be crying because you don't have what you need to get across that stage. So it starts right here today. My first charge before you graduates is to successfully complete your 24 hours of service learning hours. So you don't have time to be chasing after your boo over the summer, or on Facebook, or Twitter, all that on summer. You need to give up some of your time and give to somebody else. That's stage one of being great. It's not about you. And I know, some of y'all don't, don't like what I'm saying. I don't care, because it's necessary. I'm also going to help you out, parents. So when your child gets to high school, the number one thing you want to build with their teachers in that school is a relationship. What makes Potomac High School so successful is that we stress relationship first. I really don't care what your degrees are. I'm not shaken by that. I got more than enough on my own. I want to know, can you build a relationship? 
Can you be positive and sustain that the entire school year? So parents, when, they, when you get your child into to that high school, the first thing I need you to do is to make sure that they have your email address. And then, I'm gonna give it week one. Week one of school, all you need to do is make sure you have all of the teacher's emails and then shoot them an email from the very beginning. Start that relationship early. Don't wait. I want the graduates to tell me, how many grades are teachers required to give you in high school on a weekly basis? How many, how many, how many grades are teachers required to give you on a weekly basis in high school? Say it again? You're right. I'm dealing with a smart group. So if that's the case, so if I come to your class week one, I, I did all my warm-ups, my bell works, in, in independent practice, guided practice, I did whatever you told me to do, week one, boom. Week two, I did all my work, boom. Now we're knocking on week three. Do I still have an A in your class? That's the question you need to be asking. We're now in the third week of school. Do I still have straight A's? Does everybody start with a 4.0? Everybody in here start high school with a 4.0. So what happened? I'm going to tell you what happens. You fail to monitor. You fail to pay attention to your own stuff. And because of that, I can treat you any old kind of way. I'm going to show you how. So let's say you go to Mr. Smoke class. And let's say you give me your work. And let's say your work is, is the worst. Zeros, right? But because you don't ask about what grades you got, right? Week one goes by. Week two goes by. Week three goes by. Now we're knocking on progress reports. And I go ahead and I just put a grade in. And you like, this work I had done the first or second week of school. How did I get a zero on this? I'm going to give you a rebuttal and ask you, have you not been watching school maps? Have you not been monitoring your grades? So when you get to high school, it's time for you to take charge of your own education, young people. And it's painful, but it's necessary. So you're right. Teachers are required to give a minimum of two grades a week. So what does that mean? Every week, parents and graduates should be monitoring school maps. Don't you come up in that building week five talking about, I want to know how my child doing. You tell me. You don't have access to school maps? It's important that you stay active these next four years because y'all are class of 2020. So there's three things you're going to need to be successful in life. One, you're going to have to embrace and endure pain despite the vicissitudes that you face. Face them and get through it. Two, always operate on your purpose. Don't chase money. Don't chase the, the trying to be booze and friends with everybody. Operate on your purpose. Tap into that self-esteem. So when somebody telling you who you're not, you stop and look at yourself and tell yourself who you are. That's how you avoid nonsense. And number three, greatness is all about service. Everybody talking about Muhammad Ali, he was a great fighter. Stop thinking. His greatness has nothing to do with what he did in that boxing ring. It was about the way he served. And in fact, he had the heart to go up against everybody for what he believed, his purpose. Which slides me into these three young people you see standing behind you or around you. We're going to start with my man, Eric Pratt. I've been with Eric Pratt since Oxford Hill Middle School. That's about one of my sons. You already know. Eric Pratt has had, has had good days. He's had some tough days. However, he's endured the pain, and now he's a rising senior. That's the goal to get that cap and gown in 2020. And I have to finish it. That's my son. He's done exactly what he needed to do, and what you need in high school is a friend like Eric Pratt. Parents, I need you to look at Eric Pratt. You want your child to be around somebody that works hard, somebody that has their own mind, Somebody that decides I'm not gonna be with everybody. And he told me, he said, Mr. Smoke, I want to go to Green State. He said, You went to Green State, I'm going. I said, You know what, Eric? We're gonna make sure that that happens. And when you get down to VSU, he's gonna have my number. VSU's gonna be an hour and 30 minutes away. And anything that he needs, I'm still his administrator. I'm gonna come down here and hold him down. We slide him to this next person. For all of my Let me introduce you to the one, the only, Elijah Brown. Elijah Brown, I also had to talk to you. Elijah Brown has taken most of all AP classes at the main place. Elijah Brown plays football. Elijah Brown has six A's and two D's right Thank you.
Smoke signing off. I'm out.